Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Erewash series. Erewash is one of the nine subdivisions of the county of Derbyshire. There are 14 civil parishes within it. Let's see which one we're in today. Well, today in Area Wash, I've got one for you that I've been looking forward to doing for quite a while. I'm stood in a bus stop and it's opposite a school, or should I say an old school, because it's no longer a school. That is the old schoolroom. It's now a tea rooms and a deli, I believe. I'm not quite sure. I'll have to have a look on the sign in a moment. But the school is really not the most famous thing about this place, not by a long shot at all. And that's because if you look around you, you can see references to this place everywhere in this country. It's because it used to have a very famous ironworks, a world famous ironworks in fact. And you will find that ironworks, or the remains of them, in Stanton by Dale. <laughs> This Error Wash episode is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Stanton by Dale, which is often written in a hyphenated fashion, lies south of Ilkeston and north of Sandyacre in the Erewash borough of Derbyshire, and it has done since 1974. The village is the midpoint as the crow flies between the cities of Derby and Nottingham, being 6.9 miles from each city. Beginning on School Lane, I got the parish notice board out of the way early here. There's a lot to talk about in this one for such a small place. Having just a population of 505, you wouldn't think that Stanton was a name that's known worldwide. That's thanks to the many ironwork products bearing its name across the globe. Stanton Ironworks sat to the northeast of the village and made both manhole covers and concrete street lamp standards. I can assure you, you will have seen at least one in your lifetime. We've got a village to discuss first though, because Stanton's history runs back much further than the time of the ironworks. Here's a bit of basic information before we go any further. Stanton was mentioned in the Doomsday Book. Its name, Stanton by Dale, originates from stone quarrying in the area and the fact that it was close to Dale Abbey. During the 13th and 14th centuries, much land in the parish was owned by Dale Abbey. After its dissolution in 1538, the Abbey's property in Stanton was granted to the Babington family. Many local buildings contain stone which originated as part of the abbey. I imagine one of those would be the village hall, which has this Stanton Ironworks plaque on the side of it. We're on Stanhope Street here, named for the Earl Stanhope of Chevening in Kent, who were lords of the manor in the 18th century, eventually selling the parish to the Stanton Ironworks Company. There's a couple of amenities of note, like the village hall, and there's an old red telephone box across the road housing Stanton's defibrillator. Bus-wise, you can easily get one out here. The bus you need is the number 14 service between Ilkeston and Sandyacre. Thank you. 
So as regards the Stanton Ironworks, you may well be familiar with the name. Manhole covers all over the country bear the name Stanton and Staveley. I wonder if I can find one right here in Stanton. Stanton has two pubs. The first one we come across is the Stanhope Arms, again taking the name of the Earl Stanhope. There's a second pub near the end of this route. The Stanhope Arms has its own separate car park over the road. The pub is famed for the Stanhope Arms Scotch Egg, where the sausage meat has been infused with black pudding. That sounds good to me. Next, we pass a Victorian cast iron water pump gifted to the village in 1897 to commemorate Queen Victoria's beneficent reign. It was given by the women of Stanton, and oddly, despite being made of cast iron, it was apparently forged at Colebrookdale Ironworks rather than Stanton. Aside from the ironwork, Stanton also has a long history with sports, particularly cricket. Stanton Bydale Cricket Club has a history going back to 1868. The club is based at the end of School Lane on the Crompton Ground. Our main walk here doesn't pass that, so there's a mention of it in today's picture bit. So our next major location is the church, which is behind this wall here. There's like a little track up to the right, but also here, there's another track for Middlemore Cottages, which are a set of almshouses. Middlemore's almshouses are a charming row of gabled brick cottages named after Mrs. Winifred Middlemore, who built four of them in 1711. The next four were added in 1735. There were further extensions in 1829 and 1904, and you can get a good view of them from Church Lane. This building though is not one of them, this is the church office. While I was still searching for that manhole cover, I came across this, which was also made at Stanton Ironworks. As well as looking down at the floor to find evidence of Stanton's former industry, look up too. There are many street lamps just like this around the country, which originated here. That brings us to St Michael and All Angels Church, which dates from about 1300, although it's not certain whether there was an earlier church on this site. The tower here is 15th century. The church is part of a group comprising Stanton, Dale Abbey and Risley, hence the letters SDR on this sign. Do remember to shut the gate though if you come here, won't you? So at least I've managed to find one thing so far that was made at Stanton Ironworks. I'm still looking for that manhole cover though. Here in the churchyard, we've got the War Memorial, which is a pretty simple obelisk, but it does the job just like all the other war memorials we've seen. Oh, the sun's coming out a bit more now, that's good. Right, let's talk a bit about this church, shall we? It was much altered in an 1872 restoration. Inside, there are three stained glass windows designed by the renowned Victorian Charles Kemp, who had seen the church as his vocation. Suffering from a severe stammer though, a bit like me at times, rather than preaching, he decided to use his talents to adorn the church, something he's done in a few churches seen on this channel now. Now we're beyond the church and out into a vast open space, which is crisscrossed by several footpaths. That's a surefire way to know that you're in Derbyshire. That's backed up by this awesome view. Considering later in the day it rained out here, I have to say I caught this part of Stanton at precisely the right time. The village has a playground, which is rather oddly located out here for some reason, well away from civilization, and only reachable by these public rights of way. Folks, this is some view. This really is some view. Glorious Derbyshire in the fantastic May sunshine. One of the footpaths takes us back into the village and onto Flake Lane. The layout of Stanton's streets is pretty much unchanged from how they appear on maps in the 1760s. Residence-wise, one of Stanton by Dale's most notable would be the aviation pioneer Hugh Oswald Short, who with his two brothers built some of the first British aircraft in history. Check out this medieval cross next. Known as the Village Cross, this stands at the foot of Pepper Lane under an old horse chestnut tree, with its fleur de lis style head dating back nearly 400 years. Considering that the place is famed for something as heavily industrial as the ironworks, it's quite remarkable that Stanton by Dale is now considered an idyllic oasis by some. 
Another footpath at the end of Pepper Lane takes us out again into the countryside briefly before we turn back towards Dale Road. And now we're on Dale Road, so named because if you follow it you'll come to Dale Abbey. This is generally a residential street, but it's fascinating what you can find out about property. Now I want to show you this house here, <clears throat> this one on the corner, and I want you to take note of its colour. It's a very light shade of green, it may have been darker in times past, but that is Stanton green, that colour, and lots of houses in the village were once painted that colour. Only workers at the ironworks were allowed to live in Stanton owned properties. In later years, these houses were all painted Stanton Green, a colour still evident in the village. More footpaths next, and this one leads south out of the village to a road that's called No Man's Lane. There's got to be a story behind that street name, surely. Here's the second of the two pubs, the Checkers Inn. No Scotch eggs here though, this is much more of a traditional drinker's pub, but it does still do food, pub grub with pies that are homemade. Next to this is a former Methodist church, long since converted into a private residence. The date stone in the gable reads 1860, but the porch is clearly of a later style. On the subject of buildings, I should also mention Stanton Hall. In 1846, Benjamin Smith, known as the Iron Master, lived in it. It was he who first established an ironworks here. However, he and his son went bankrupt in 1849, and the creditors carried on the business before selling it to James Haywood, who made it financially sound. Okay, I finally found a manhole cover. This is right in the middle of the road, so I have to be quick. There you go, look. Stanton, Stanton PLC. They are, and they are all around the country. Have a look in your local area. I guarantee you there's gonna be one around you somewhere that's got Stanton written on it. Okay, so we're almost done with the main walk around. All I've got to do is walk back around this corner to where I started outside the, uh, the deli. And then I'll be going down this road right here because down there will take us towards where the ironworks or part of the ironworks used to be. And there's something very interesting we can walk to as well. So now we're off further afield. There's just time to mention the old schoolhouse cafe and deli run since 2014 by two former paramedics. This is a popular spot for both walkers and cyclists. On the way, we pass the Erewash Valley Golf Club founded in 1905, and this is an 18 hole course set in 165 acres of prime parkland. You can walk across this provided you stick to the footpaths. In 2008, the clubhouse was vastly extended to allow for two bar restaurant areas and a new enlarged locker and changing rooms. Right, so here we are at Stanton Gate Local Nature Reserve. There you go, Stanton Gate, which is this here. Now, as nice as this is, and it would be nice to walk through, this is not what we're interested in here. What we're doing is we're going alongside it, alongside an old canal and that will take us up to a lock and that lock is called Stanton Lock. We're now at the Erewash Canal or Erewash Valley Canal which runs alongside the site of Stanton Ironworks. Once bustling with activity the canal towpath is now used mainly as a cycle trail. It's an eight minute walk to Stanton Lock. On the way the canal runs underneath some major landmarks including for example this bridge which carries the M1 motorway. There's then this bridge which carries an old railway line. The tracks are still there, but I followed them on Google Maps and they just stop on the other side of the canal. Both the line and the canal would have been major transportation links for the ironworks, but the canal was also used for transporting coal. Shipley and West Hallam collieries are not far away. The ironworks site is not much more than a huge patch of waste ground these days. In its heyday, this was the Ilkeston area's largest manufacturing concern and consequently its biggest employer. Forming part of the Stanton and Staveley Group, it was later part of the Tubes Division of British Steel Corporation. At its height, the company employed around 12,500 people. So this area is quite peaceful these days, but course through time it would have been quite a bustling area it would have been heaving with activity the ironworks were all along this canal side I found some lovely pictures by the way of uh, the ironworks I can show you that in today's picture bit there would have been plenty of boats on this canal and plenty of trains running across that railway line 
and the ironworks themselves well there's not much left of them now not at least here but some of the buildings do still stand in a different area which is where I'm going to end this video in a few moments time you need the picture bit first though and here it comes right now Some of the ironworks buildings can still be seen if you know where to look. Here we're on Lowe's Lane, which is a road running through an industrial area northeast of Stanton by Dale. This building with the tall tower is the ironworks old fire station. Again, there are some amazing images of this online, which even show the old fire engines. Over the road, we have an exhibition center and a training center. Whilst these are mostly all derelict, the ironworks site was sold to French company saint Gabin Glass, who still use some of them. Iron stopped being produced here in 2007 and the site has been largely cleared. It's awaiting redevelopment, although as of 2015, some concrete items were still produced here. The main aim for the ironworks site now is to be converted into a brand new industrial area, New Stanton Park, which will include warehouse units from 15,000 to 1 million square feet in size. In the midst of all these old buildings we have a pub, believe it or not. This is the Seven Oaks, a traditional bar and restaurant which was in the news recently. See the link below for that. And there you go my friends, that has been the parish of Stanton by Dale. And I do hope that I've covered enough as far as the old ironworks goes. There are probably some other bits and bobs that I haven't been to, probably some other buildings that still stand. But I think, to be honest with you, I've got the main bits, the canal, the lock, the exhibition training centre, the old fire station. And of course, I found a manhole cover with Stanton written on it as well. So yeah, all things ironworks I think have been covered here. But do let me know if there is anything else in Stanton by Dale that I maybe should have known about. It's time for me to move on to my next one here in the borough of Erewash. And I'll see you when I get there. I've been Andy, otherwise known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.